Just, will you say your name there? So uh, Ron Bramley. Lovely. Or an L bar, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, you're born in Abbey Leaks, born and bred? Born and bred in Abbey Leaks. Town and it's knocked them all. Can claim to be a true Abbey Leaks man. Antecedents of mine in England were involved with the railways, and I, I put it down to that. My grandfather was originally from near uh, Castleford in Yorkshire, and he came to Ireland to the Atai Brick and Tile Company in uh, around 1890, and married and settled down in Ireland, and I put it down to that, that that's where the interest came from. I've always had an interest in the steam, especially the steam. Mm. And I was fortunate to be around f for the end of steam. It was the end of an era. But time marches on. In the mid-19th century, the railroad in Ireland was at the height of its boom. Kingsbridge, known today as Houston Station, was the hub from which passengers, goods and freight could travel the length and breadth of the country, stopping not only at the main cities, but in many small towns along its network. The Great Southern and Western Railway first moved towards Waterford in the 1860s, a route passing through Kildare and Carlow, heading due south. The story of how it came to pass through Abbey Leaks, however, is not quite so straightforward. There is a story during the rounds that when the railway company, when they were surveying for the railroad, that initially the railroad, the station, wasn't supposed to be located in Abbey Leaks. Uh, the story goes that the station was destined for Ballinac Hill. Uh, and uh, it's alleged that the local landlord approached the railway company and made them an offer uh, that if they brought the station to Abbey Lakes that he would give them uh, the land for the station for nothing. So how true that is, I'm not exactly sure, but it's a good story. Actually, when the, ra the first railway built was from Kingsbridge down to Carlow, and it was going to head south that way. And then there was a change of heart and they branched off at Cherryville Junction and headed south for Cork. So it got to Waterford first through Carlow. Then it set off, they set out from Kilkenny to join up with the uh, line at Port Leash. And they wanted to come to Ballinacill, that's true. But the, uh, the story is that the lords of the manor in Ballinacill wouldn't entertain it like the way people can object to things today. And uh, Lord of Essie uh, obliged by supplying the right of way through Abbey Leaks. At Abbey Leaks, then, there was a, dis uh, a pause to know would they head for Mount Rath on the main line, which is over at Kilbricken, or up to Port Leash, but they decided to head for Port Leash. And that's the, f the whole lot was opened in 1867. It didn't make the hundred years. First of all, it was status. It was a status for the town. You had a link. You, you had this permanent link. You know, was, there, were, there were like veins going through, the, the lifelines going through the country. And you remember that time too, cars were, you know, not everyone had access to a car. And it, it, it was the... Uh, main mode of, and uh, for transport of goods as well trucks were only in their uh, trucks as we know today that can bring that amount of goods were only in their infancy cattle as I've already told you were uh, still walked to fairs the marts were just about to start uh, it was it was it was a lifeline and all goods was carried by rail but uh, people depended on it big time the railway would have been a, a big boost to the economy of the town from the point of view of getting uh, goods to market and getting marketable goods into the market town. So it, it, 
it formed a big part of the economic life and the social, I suppose, social life of the place as well. It was, uh, it was a, a kind of centre of activity for, for the town. Big feature of the town that time was the local postman bringing the mail down to the station. Andy DeWire, five or six kids in the town, we all trooping down along with them. It was an occasion to catch the train at 5.30. And the mail that went out at 5.30, that could be in London the next day. There's stories locally about around Christmas time, turkeys coming by train and being herded up the main street. Uh, they, they would gather a mehel and you can imagine the fun and games that that engendered for the kids of the day, uh, this spectacle of, of uh, hundreds of turkeys being marshalled up the main street from the railway. Right. And of course, like, it would bring like, the, the railway freight arriving in from the railway meant maybe new goods coming into the shops, you know. So at all, it, there would have been certainly an air of excitement mm. around the railway, always. And the school being beside the station, he had the trains there at hand all, all day and that's where you spent all your leisure time and play time and that was it went on from that but little did we realise that by 1962 it, was it would be gone but at the time you didn't think of it we saw the coming of the diesels diesel rail cars, diesel locomotives the end of steam the last two passed down in, in September 62, which I witnessed as well, and that was the end of steam in Abbey Leaks. So uh, we, we, we've seen it all there. It was most enjoyable. Uh, the, the last, it was Monday. The 31st of December, 1962. And uh, we had a hard winter. It's, it was snow on the ground for that, for the closure. The winter of 62. Uh, train service, same train service, goods train ran that day. And a friend of mine, man that I started off on the railway with, uh, travelling on the, on the railway, Mick Tynan, he uh, brought up the last goods train and uh, passed the, what we call the half five train from Waterford to Dublin. That was the last up train and we went down and joined that train at uh, quite a crowd travel that day. Hard to believe it was, it was a mixture of excitement and hype and, but uh, Got a return ticket to Port Leash. Travelled into Port Leash then and waited there for the Dublin Waterford train. We got on board. Fortunately, the, the ticket checker gave it, let us hold on to our tickets. A man called Harry Barry from Waterford. Travelled. I came back with the driver that night came into the Abbey Leaks to the sound of detonators. Big crowd there to receive the train. Quite a few people got on to head on for Kilkenny. And amazingly, a number of passengers that were going to water wondered what all the hullabaloo was about. St. Bridges Pipe Band had come down for the occasion. And they played a medley on the platform had to do an if, Bailey's farewells, change the staff, that's the, the uh, key to travel to the next station, Valley Ragged, flagged away the train, and that was the end of Abbey Leak Station. The pipe band, St. Bridges Pipe Band, struck up old Lang Zion. And we all went our way. Just end of an era. The station master retired. 
Patrick Deniff, John Ryan, transferred to Port Leash and finished up their railway career there. Permanent Way staff moved to Port Leash and uh, the track then was got to set in immediately to uh, tear up the track and that was completed by uh, May May 63 rails were retrieved and brought to Port Leash the sleepers were stacked in the station and they were auctioned off by Mr Going in Port Leash and that was the that was the end of Abbey Leak Station. And the site of the station without rails is, uh, it was quite, quite, quite sad. Quite sad. Like a river with, or like a dry riverbed. But there we go. So the town settled down then to uh, an era without the railway. They had given a great service. Had given a great service. This was roughly where the, uh, the, the starting signal was for the set of points up there. Then we had the uh, up road over here, the Lord's Walk down there, which was a direct run walk from the station to the uh, Abbey Leaks house. It's remarkable time. It's hard to believe it's, it's, it's gone so long. Yeah, people said it were the good old days. Not hard times though, but people were contented. Now we're in another age.